My friends, what is going on? This is my fifth attempt at this video. There will not be a six, so hopefully this one works. Uh, before we jump into the video, you guys know the deal. Nothing I'm giving you is financial advice. Everything is for educational and entertainment purposes only. I want you to make awesome decisions for yourself, your family, and your portfolio. Let's jump into it. I want to cover SPY, Q, IWM, SoFi, Mara, AI, NVIDIA, Palantir, Hood, Unity, GME, Celsius, Peloton, and We'll finish the video off with Tesla. First things first, if you are listening to anybody who is trying to tell you to short this market or buy puts, quit listening to them immediately. That is financial advice. Shorting stocks or indexes when they are above all their short-term EMAs and SMAs is stupid. Let me say that again. That is stupid. Does that mean things can't go down? We can't have a red day along the way? No, I always fully expect that. However, overall, this market is going higher, especially with where we are at from a seasonality perspective. Now, please remember, we are in a short week. Typically, these weeks have low volume, relatively choppy because it's going to be a closed Thursday, half day on Friday. So always factor that into your trading. If you haven't done so already, also too, please follow me on Twitter, Colin underscore Gladman. If I think anything drastically changes, we have a change of character of what the overall trend is going to be. I will make sure that I post it there. Also, never underestimate the power of what happens when your previous ceiling now becomes your new floor. What does that mean? Well, this was our daily resistance for a long time. We broke through on the Trump election, came back, retested, and are now pushing higher. So overall, minimum, I think we're going back to 6 to 604 probably this week. But overall, I think 620 to 640 is a good year-end target on SPY. Uh, that, that's kind of what I'm looking for as of right now. And like I said, that'll be towards the end of the year. My short-term targets are about 600 to 604 uh, probably this week. Probably have a day that's a nice trend day um, and then some shop fest towards the uh, end of the week. But that's what I'm going to be looking for. Also, too, let me check here. Yeah, so, I mean, we're already above the golden pocket here. So maybe a little bit of trouble around 597. That makes sense. But if we gap above that and start to go, so I would say Monday could be potentially the nice day, then chop a little bit Tuesday, Wednesday, and then it'll be kind of a nothing burger on Thursday. So there's going to be probably one trend day follow up with some some chop days or it'll chop, trend, chop. I mean, it's we're going to push up, in my opinion, to, like I said, about 6 to 604. Uh, on QQQ, Full disclosure, I am in calls already. I swung them over the weekend. I bought them right before close because I love these type of looks. So on Thursday at open, we pretty much dropped straight down. I mean, right off the bat at open is 10 points just straight down. Then we recovered. We're trading up here, constantly applying pressure to the previous uh, daily supply from back over here at the end of November. Um, and you've pretty much got an ascending triangle going on. That just means you're making higher lows with some flat top resistance. I am fully expecting a push up and out of here, maybe even a gap up, up to somewhere between 508 to 511. 508 certainly could be a point of contention because if we back out here to the daily basis, we can see that that is our big gap down level. So even if we just gap up a little bit, like 506, 507, and start to push into that, I certainly will take profits. My calls are for Friday, but I was expecting either a gap up or kind of a nice, like I said, trend day on Monday. But overall, once again, very strong look. Uh, Q's lagging a little bit just due to uh, NVIDIA's situation was selling off a little bit post earnings. Now, IWM, guys, looks fantastic. We were in an ascending triangle. We gapped and broke above. We pulled back on lower volume, and now we are starting to curl back up again. If you look at this thing on a weekly basis, it really tells the story, right? I mean, just compression, 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 ascending triangle, big bust through, gapped up, sold off. Um, if you'll remember from my last videos oh, on SPY, QQQ, all that kind of stuff, I said we want to push up a minimum of 50% of last week's candle, blasted through that on uh, on IWM, on Q. You're right at that 50%. It was the most of the lagging, and then SPY was well above the 50% mark. So all this looks good. It shows the broadening out that we've been wanting to see in the market and that rotation back to the small uh, mid caps. But you had a 618 retrace here, followed up by a nice 
push above. I, I fully expect small mid caps to keep going. I think 250 to 260 is very reasonable by the end of the year there. SoFi, this is one I'm in shares in. This is your weekly look. We finally made that support resistance flip over 14, a nice push. I would like to see a little bit of consolidation up in here as your weekly EMAs catch up before a continued push. But this is one that I think I'll be able to catch 100% just off shares alone. And overall, I think we're probably going to the 1.618, which is around 28, which as you can see is pretty much the previous all-time highs. I think SoFi looks great here on a weekly macro chart. On a daily basis, any type of pullbacks towards this 13, 14 level, in my opinion, are very viable. This has pretty much just been riding the daily nine up. Every time you get to uh, extend over the daily nine, it flags back into it and then continues to push up. On its earnings, put in a nice high volume hammer candle here showing you how strongly that dip was bought. And it's just, it's been consolidating for such a long time, finally getting the breakout. Uh, that it deserves on the chart and catching a nice push up. So I'm only in calls, or excuse me, <laughs> I'm only in shares here. Um, I'll sell calls at some key areas, probably around like 20 and 25 and 30, things of that nature. And like I said, it, it's not necessarily a long term hold for me, but this is a great looking chart. Speaking of great looking charts on a macro basis, here's Mara on a weekly. So just like with SoFi, you have the inverse head and shoulders, you have the breakout flagged, found support off that $18 mark, huge volume, bullish engulfing candle. I fully expect more uh, the way I would look at this one. Uh, I am in shares here at about 23 bucks. No, excuse me, 26 bucks. No, where am I at in Mara? It's around that ballpark. Thank you for holding. Yeah, 23, a little over 23. So. Nice bullish engulfing candle here on the weekly. I fully expect Mara to work its way up towards 60, even potentially up to new all-time highs. I said this one's for me. I'm not in calls or anything like that. And look at this volume, guys. Exactly what you want to see. Consolidation volume gets sucked out, starting to push. High volume move. Uh, crypto's obviously looking very good. Historically does well after elections. So um, wanted a little exposure here. And this is just a beautiful chart from a markup to distribution to mark down, accumulation, sign of strength. I, yeah, I mean, it, over the next 12 to 18 months, I think this one is gonna do very well overall. But we'll see, you know, nothing, nothing's foolproof. Uh, same thing here on AI, beautiful weekly inverse head and shoulders, flagging out, catching your breakout with volume. I think this is another one. I have zero position here, but it's a great looking chart, great looking setup, like I said, on a weekly basis. So be smart, but same thing with the volume coming in at the right time. I think it looks good. Uh, for a push up. NVIDIA, it's holding that 140 support resistance flip. I think at worst, you're probably going to continue trading sideways in here um, till whether it be SMCI news um, or another chip does well on earnings or NVIDIA. Uh, it's, I don't see it going anywhere. I see it worse consolidating. Excuse me. I think your most uh, potential pullback is anywhere between 135 uh, to 130. Those are all going to be very viable dips. I just don't see it going anywhere, especially this 130. I wouldn't get bearish on NVIDIA unless it starts slicing through 130. But other than that, anything around 130, I would 100% uh, buy the dip. Reason. My microphone and my computer wax spazzy for a second. So if I see that at all, I'm just going to unplug everything and reset. Uh, so you can see how many times I've made this video, right? So uh, Palantir on a weekly basis, this is why I'm showing you guys these charts. You had your inverse head and shoulder. You flagged out here, flagged out again on a weekly basis, just kept working its way up. So between SoFi, Mara, AI, all these other kind of charts, this is what you want to see. And even if you miss the bottom, who cares? Catch yourself the meat of the move. But these are the type of charts that you want to see. I fully expect the SoFi's, the Mars of the world are all going to be kind of looking like this, like I said, over the next 12 to 18 months. So I'm just grabbing some shares. I think they'll be 100% winners or more. But we'll see. You guys know the deal. I'll, I'll update if I think that drastically changes. Uh, but Palantir, I did want to show on a daily basis, could be looking for its next move here. So you had your volume on your push up, 
flagged out into the daily nine. I mean, this thing looks pretty good here to potentially go on another run. I think your next stop is going to be in the 70s. So now you're pretty much you're in price exploration territory. Um, but I think this daily move looks like it wants to go towards around 82 to 100, potentially towards the end of the year. Looks really good on a daily basis. And so long as it holds, yeah, basically 58 to 60, it looks great. Uh, hood, a weekly chart. Once again, see how many times I've tried to make this video already? Same look as all these other ones. It's a little bit further ahead. Wish I would have caught it a little bit sooner. But I know I've been talking about Hood since that $14, $15 range. You can go check my Twitter. Uh, this was its sign of strength right up in here, pushing up nicely. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that you want to see anytime a key area is taken out. It just V-shaped recoveries up and right out through that. So Hood is one that I am in on shares mainly because it finally made this 35 weekly support resistance flip. I actually think I got in at about 34 as the daily action was clearly showing bullish consolidation here. Yeah, I bought either Thursday or Friday of last week. You push out, caught its daily nine support resistance flip. It looks great. All you could ask for uh, in a stock on a daily basis. And yeah, I mean, you're pretty much... Yeah, so it did reject kind of right up here off this bear gap. So the next big level is going to be 40. But once you start getting over 40, I, I think you're you're pressing all-time highs. Crypto stays strong. Hood's going to be another great-looking chart. Unity, oh, look. Stop me if you've seen this setup before. Inverse head and shoulders to a flag. Now, what I like about this is pretty much what I just talked about. Like anytime you're getting those uh, support resistance flips, if... You lose key support. Holy cow. See how many times I've had to make this video? We'll just have to do it the hard way. Anytime you get these huge support resistance flip, if it slices through it, this is what you want to see on your, oh my gosh, sorry, on your chart is you want to see that V-shaped recovery. Anytime that liquidity is swept, you want the V-shaped recovery. See, my computer just started making weird noises. I don't even know what's going on there. Tesla runs this week. Maybe we can afford a new computer. Keep my eye on you. So you swept those previous highs? If you're still with me, you have the heart of a saint, and I appreciate you. Like and subscribe. Push up, sweep the lows. Sorry, sweep the lows. Push up, sweep the highs. It's just insane. Sorry, my friends. I have no idea what's just going on here. But that's when, when it flashes like this, this is when it gives me audio problems. Okay. So, this is what you might want to see with something like Unity. So it's swept. Now you want to see it might flag, consolidate, spend some time underneath 25, and then you want to see the push up from there. I do think 25 is a big support resistance flip, much like what I just talked about is 35 on hood. But you make that support resistance flip, and Unity can really, really run. I am in shares here, uh, like I said, playing the long game. GME, 
Just want to see it keep base in that 25. I want to see it push 30 again. You don't want to lose this momentum right here. Uh, keep staying above that daily nine. Keep applying the pressure. Just essentially make this kind of ascending triangle look, and then you get that pop and go. It's a great looking setup, but you got to get above 30. I talked multiple times about the sticky area right around 28, and same thing. It just it kept applying pressure, kept applying pressure, finally took it out did close below it but you got a bullish inside bar so i mean it's probably going to consolidate this week but week after thanksgiving it, it needs to start making a move and the good news is is you're making these kind of moves without like a roaring kitty tweet so a roaring kitty tweet happens this thing is going to go uh full send on probably be up 75 to 100 percent overnight uh on celsius pretty much what i just talked about unity swept that key level uh and you can see it on a weekly basis much better but this was strong support right around that 27.28. It swept it, put in a bullish engulfing. I would have liked to seen the volume tick up here. It did not. But overall, this thing might essentially kind of work its way into a, an inverse head and shoulder look just on a much bigger basis than what I thought it was going to be. So I'm not a buyer here yet, but it is something that I am keeping on watch once again. Peloton. This looks beautiful on a weekly basis. Super low volume last week when it pulled back. Nice increase in volume as it pushing up here. Uh, big key level right around this sort of $10 support resistance flip. Uh, but overall, this thing looks very nice. And, and like I said, I, I really think it can, it, it can, it's going to take some time. But I mean, don't be surprised when this thing is pushing back towards 80. I think a minimum 100% play here on shares. Uh, especially if they get their financial act together, it can be 100, 200, 300 uh, percent. I, like I said, I own shares, and I've been talking about it for a while now since it was four dollars. But this is exactly what you want to see. Like I said, consolidate, protect the gap, get the second leg up, and just keep on pushing. All right, uh, Tesla. Look how many times I made this freaking video. Gosh dang. So we had the push up, the bull flag, push up consolidation in an ascending triangle, really more of a pennant style look, got the push up. Overall, I wanna see a push towards 370 this week. This Tesla look is a little bit of a, I don't know. I mean, look, look at this one minute candle here. So nobody caught that, right? I closed out of my weekly calls right around in here around 355, 356. Yes, this might even be a trading view error, I don't know, but it's still showing it that it shot up to 361 and then shot right back down all, so 361 to 353 in a minute. So I don't take that. Normally I wouldn't like this look on the daily basis. And what I wouldn't like on the daily basis is the fact that you swept the previous highs and then closed below. So normally I wouldn't like sweeping the previous highs but closing below right there. But that one minute candle, like I said, so that's why I put that line right there at 356.65, because really, you know, you take out that, this would be a nice daily candle look breaking out of three inside bars and volume starting to increase, which is what I was looking for. So I fully expect Tesla to keep right on pushing. Yes, I already am in calls. A couple different ways to look at it is this right here, I would expect a move. Like I said, 371. Also, taking the same type of measurement from here. Now, I'm not going to go as high as what it was. I'm going to go to where it should have been. That one, 371 as well. So a lot of confluence that 370 is going to be tested. Um, and I fully expect that probably like maybe Monday or Tuesday. Also, too, if we take the full extension from our bull flag right here, that 618, 363, I think it'll overshoot that a little bit. Um, but I think we're eventually making our way to 400 on this deal. Uh, might take, I, I think it's probably going to be sooner rather than later. I think Tesla's probably going to make all time highs uh, before the end of the year. And obviously, you're starting to get in some stickier territory, but I've got this line up here right around all time highs. 400 is going to be a big key psychological lever. So I would expect some stop and some retracing up in there. But yeah, it it looks good. It really does. So. Um, and certainly any retest back towards 350, I'm going to be buying more calls, me personally. 350, worst case scenario, back towards this 338 level. 
yeah, I mean, there's a ton of support in here. I'd be surprised if it drops at all, to be honest. But if it does, because we don't just go straight up, I'm about 70%. I think 370 is going to happen Monday or Tuesday, for sure. But we shall see. That's why we play the game, all right? Yeah. Um, guys, I'm sorry this video is terrible. It's Like I said, it's the fifth time I've tried to make it. super frustrating. Um, thank you if you stuck around this long. Like and subscribe. I'll try to get a new one out, you know, maybe towards the end of this week. or well, Once we have any type of significant movement where I think we need to do an update, I'll do it. All right. Much love. Have a good one, my friends.